All right, greetings, welcome, hang in there. I promised you all I would be back with our last discussion of the day and then afterwards we're going into the reading of the day, okay, which is going to be about the daily dose of bad karma towards individuals who come against divine beings or anybody coming towards people with malicious intent or those who are hell-bent on doing fucked up shit and what their penalties for that is. <laughs> Later, we will be doing the reading on that. But now this is the last discussion. I told you guys I was going to come back and discuss something from a neuroscientific perspective pertaining to why we are, why we like, why we are attracted to sexually attracted, dot, 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 okay? From a position of neuroscience, okay, alchemical, if you will, however you want to look at it, but it's based, it's, it's a lot of um, validity in this. OK, this is why it serves us to become self-educated and do our due diligence on matters that we were not just automatically trained and taught in our prospective cultures or dispensations, age dispensations, you know, religious dispensations, whatever. OK, because some of this stuff bypasses all of that and we were not taught that. And so we don't know nothing about that. And so essentially. You know, we kind of just been bumping our way th <laughs> through some shit. OK, now. Based on what I've been hearing, I was listening to one neuroscientist. You guys know if you follow me long enough that I have actually been following and studying neuroscience for a long time. I've always been fascinated with the human brain. I've always been fascinated with psychology. I studied it in college. That wasn't, not, it wasn't my major, but I did certainly study it. I went into business later. Um, I have a multifaceted background. Shit to hold and been a dental assistant, bitch. I done done a whole kind of, whole bunch of shit. <laughs> Just say a jack of many trades and a master of much. Okay. Now <laughs> somebody's like, dang, real Gina like that, like that. It's like that. But anyway, I digress. The point of this discussion is how it helped me. See, you guys hear me talk about narcissism a lot. And so this is ta actually tied into narcissism. It's tied into narcissistic abuse and it's tied to the dysfunctions that we come from, from our parents. Trippy, isn't it? So this is why you guys hear me say stuff sometime. Like, you know, I make statements like we all have a right to be attracted to what we're attracted to. and We all have our preferences. And that's 100% truth. The irony of the statement is majority of us don't understand why we are attracted to what we're attracted to, why we prefer certain things, why we're sexually charged in some very dysfunctional and toxic ways. OK, we don't know why. OK, and we end up equating it to love because of the chemicals, pheromones, hormones, you know, that goes off. But it has a lot to do with the trauma that took place with our parents, whether they, whether it had to do with, you know, everybody's situation with their parents is different. Not everybody was as severely abused necessarily, right? There are some people where the, the parents wasn't necessarily abusive, abusive more than they were just fucking negligent. Okay. They were not there. Their presence was very empty if they were there. It was like they were there, but not there. Okay. And so maybe there was no warm exchanges without something toxic connected to it, whether it been being beat on, kicked out or sexually assaulted. Okay. And so when that's the case, um, according to neuroscience, you guys do your own Google research, you know, educate yourself, do your due diligence. Okay. But because of that, we subconsciously have a sexual charge, which is very weird, and end up being sexually attracted to recreate these traumatic events that we have had with our parents or our caretakers. Okay, so for those of us that were not raised by our literal parents, it's whatever your primary foundation was and what took place with that. 
And so the subconscious is running everything. The inner child is wounded. The program is, is running those traumatic events, cycle after cycle, time after time. It's, it's on a loop. Okay. And this is why, um, according to what I'm researching, it's also why you won't at first be attracted to anything healthy. There won't be a sexual charge um, there. There won't be until you're able to balance yourself out. But because, you know, when we're not in the knowledge of this stuff and we're just hedonistic and operating from our primitive natures without the knowledge and understanding as to what's been going on, then we keep recreating it. This is why we can go from town to town, state to state, city to city. This is why we can go from church to church. This is why we can go from whatever it is, whatever arenas, whatever kind of life we've ever had until we deal. Until we get to that core, until we get to that subconscious, until we get to that deep rooted programming and story. And as an energetic neuroscience, scientific charge, look into it. The brain is fascinating, man. It's fascinating, but... We were driven by it and just start asking yourself some questions when you're alone. You don't have to judge yourself because this is not meant to make us judge ourselves. It's meant to make us open our eyes. It's meant to make us look at some things, you know, from a different angle versus, you know, this regurgitated shit we've been spitting out over and over and over again because it's all we know. It's all we know. OK, and then because of the biochemical effects, it's a chemical, it's chemical reactions. And since there's a feel good chemical that that goes off in our ignorance, we're equating it to some type of love. Or to some type of um, real deep connection and it's called trauma bonding. But that feel-good chemical, the highs and lows that are created, okay, we're reliving it out over and over again because we're trying to, some of you may say, why, why is our subconscious doing that? What's, what's going on? We're trying to reconcile something. Trying to understand, remedy, reconcile something. But when we're not dealing with it, awakening and healing and ascending and maturing through it, it's just recreating it, the same event, the same event. And because it's what we remember, it seems what? Normal. It seems this is, this is normal. This is, you know, the way it is. This is, it's what you know. Okay. Let me put, I wanted to share this with some of y'all who are interested. Hold on. Because not, man, I can't do it. Damn it. Okay, let me do it because it's something I want to share with you all here um, that you may find useful. There it is. Uh, there you go. All right. So this is for those of you who, you know, don't get yourself too tied in a knot behind this information. Feel into it. Look into it. Mull over it, think about it, ask for guidance as to how to apply and move through that for yourself, okay? But for those of you, especially if you feel like you're on some kind of an awakening path or maybe you're in the dark night of the soul and you're, you're just trying to feel your way through the shit, okay? It's a little bit much, a lot of information on top of the pain and the, and the trauma and so forth that you're going through. And so I promised at the very beginning of my journey and throughout, you know, the middle and even up to now, that everything that had ever helped me, that I used in times where I didn't have money, I didn't have, you know what I'm saying, all the connects and I didn't have this and that, the things that I found to actually be helpful and useful, that I would always share it for those who it's for. And so if you're concerned about your energy and you realize that your energy has been affected um, by your surroundings, by the people that's connected to you. If you realize that, oh my God, okay. The link that I just provided is something that you can start playing. Okay. You don't even need to try to understand. 
that you can start playing in your sleep especially. Okay, you can play low in the background when you're just washing dishes, cooking, cleaning. Um, you can play at any time you feel like you're a little bit odd and heavy and maybe that you're taking on the energies that are not your own. If you know you're around a lot of low vibratory in energies, without judgment, it's just the reality. Because people have different and, and interesting lifestyles and they involve themselves in all sorts of stuff. And if you're sensitive to energy, you may notice that you've been affected by it. Okay. And so the point of like clearing this out with that link as you guys look into that is going to help you to become clear. It's going to help you to feel more in your own authentic frequency and energy. Okay which is going to then help you to go on your own perspective path, okay? Meaning unfolding whatever it is you're feeling guided to deal with at the time. So you'll feel a little stronger, okay? Like, okay, I can, whoo, bitch. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be like, okay, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Boom. Oh, bitch, can, I can breathe, bitch. For, you know, I feel like, like myself again, bitch. You know what I'm saying? And then you can start <laughs> working through your stuff in love. Okay, in a in the most loving and kind way to yourself. Please hear me, y'all, with this, please. Because we've dealt with enough harsh fuckery. You don't need to be harsh to you yourself. You got enough haters to provide that for you. Okay. You have enough weirdos providing that for you. You have enough naysayers and nuts and, and you know providing that for you. So so be loving with your process of you know, you're waking up and this is a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. Some of you may feel even devastated, you know, by the stuff. Because, I mean, good gracious God. You know what I'm saying? For some of us, it's like you almost feel like you're being punked, shit. You're like, is this, this am I being punked, bitch? Because this is crazy. I'm on TV, something. You know, out of the crazy, you realize it's happening. <laughs> but... I'm rooting for y'all, man. I now know it wasn't just about me. But I now know that it was about anyone that would come behind me that was choosing to wake up the same way that I did and was being given hell for choosing to wake up. Okay? People that's trying to take back control over their lives and not be governed and controlled by the fuck nuts. <laughs> it's like, think again, bitch. Think again. That face you guys are seeing on the screen is, <laughs> is another one of my looks, okay? Like, think again, bitches. Harley Quinn in the house. Using that shadow to destroy some shit. Right? Meanwhile, taking care of me. See, that's the primary goal. Putting most of that energy into taking care of you. Your energy. Getting your energy back into balance. I was listening to another neuroscientist that was talking about when you've gone through um, too many series of traumatic events at the hand of narcissists, it takes us a while to get our bodies back into the parasympathetic function. So we end up being learned how to live in fight, flight, or freeze mode for a very long time, which hits your adrenal system. Okay. This is why when you guys, when people hear me talk about the dangers of narcissism or dealing with that, they think it's something cutesy. They think it's something that's just trying to imply that people were a little bit too self-centered or a little bit too vain. But that's not what we're really talking about. We're talking about the insidious nature of abuse and what this does to you on every level. Okay? Physically, mentally, emotionally, energetically. It's why they want to keep you in these loops. This is why they try to traumatize you and terrorize you, by the way, which I've learned how to turn it in a different way. And I'm starting to have a lot of fun with this. <laughs> they didn't see this one coming. But 
learning how to master your energy and getting yourself back into neutral. Um, if I'm guided, I'm just waiting to see. I'm waiting to see if I'm guided to start doing more um, series with Reiki and light language pertaining to the nervous system, pertaining to the vagus nerve and the nervous system entirely um, to get that back into balance. And that's everything. Okay. By the way, the vagus nerve is the biggest nerve, the largest nerve of the human body. So it makes sense, doesn't it? You'll start to see the art of war. Once you start educating yourself, you'll start actually seeing it. Okay? Like why, why things were done the way they were done. Okay? So do those small things because some of you may feel overwhelmed the way that I did in the beginning. Okay? You may feel overwhelmed like there's no way in hell you can do all this and have a regular life, bitch. Because I remember <laughs> I was going off in the beginning. I was going off, bitch. Then I got to a place. I'm a, I'm a funny character, man. I look back on some of this shit. I'll be like, dang, girl. Dang. Because I was talking shit. I was pissed. <laughs> And then when I figured out, you know, what death was all about, you know, versus what we think it is, you know, then I was like, look, me and my son out of here. Right. But apparently I didn't sign up for that. Like, no, nah, that's kind of what they kind of want. You ain't going nowhere until you bring their ass down. That's what you came here to do. And that's what you're going to do. You're going to expose them. You're going to bring them down. We ain't doing this now, no more lifetimes, bitch. We fencing the faces. <laughs> so I had to get over that and go, okay, cool. Then we ain't, we ain't going nowhere then. We going to be here, bitch. And whoa, apparently. Apparently. But we must get ourselves back into balance from this abuse. This is why I'm going to always advocate for you all. Get the hell away from them crazy motherfuckers. As far as you can to put yourself in a sacred, safe space to have room for you to recover. Get the hell away from their crazy ass. And then don't share. If you listen to me. If you know they still connect with motherfuckers and shit, like you have a sense, don't tell them shit. Don't tell them shit. This is all about you allowing yourself space to recover. This is why you think they trail you so bad. Like just start playing and having fun and asking questions. Why do they trail you so fucking bad? Why are they, why are they hoovering like special, you know, every, every time I say that phrase, I think of something that happened when I was like 17 years old and pregnant with my son. Every time, every time I say it, I get the same image because this is how these, these energies, these people, these beings, these, whatever the fuck they are at this point in life. This is how they are. I tell this humorous story about when I married my son's father, okay, which I don't want to get too far off in that because I don't want to get too far in that. I'll just say this. I married my son's father, which was my high school sweetheart, right? Whoa. Okay. Everybody got a story, don't we? Married my high school sweetheart. Right. Oh, the story. We got married, though. We got married very early. And um, when I was pregnant with my son. And um, 
when we were preparing for our wedding, we went to, you know, was at his his mom's, his parents' house. And uh, I've, I've told this story before. At that time, rest her soul, he had a special needs sister that uh, was older than him. But she was special needs. She, ne- you know, she could not say much, talk. You know, she she was beyond, she was a little more severe is what I'm trying to say. So she didn't really get to grow up and go out on her own or she didn't couldn't talk. And, you know, they had to... Uh, really, really take care of her. She was kind of like a child. And um, I'll never forget this. This is why every time I say hoovering and hovering and I'm equating it to these, whatever the fuck they are, um, because it's the same. So my stepdad was um, in the backyard because he was there. It was my stepdad, my mom, and me. And then we were at my son's father, my late son's father, at his parents' house, getting ready for the whole wedding thing. And my stepdad was in the backyard smoking because he wanted to go out for some. (laughs) And she was back there. My son's father's sister was back there. And... He was just walking about the backyard smoking and she was trailing behind him trying to pick up the ashes, right? Now, I know this sounds weird, you guys, but because, you know, they have oddities. So she was, you know, trying to get the ashes and my stepfather, you know, I'm never going to forget this memory. But anyway, he kept moving because he didn't know what was wrong. He kept trying to move away and she kept trailing behind. So he had this look on his face, I swear to God. But just think of it in this nature, you know, she's innocent, you know, but I'm referencing that hoovering energy, you know, where it's like, oh my God, just hoovering about like every move he made, she, you know, she wanted the ashes. And so I feel like these people, these energies, these frequencies, whatever the fuck, you know, narcs, you know, that. They hoover about your life like that. Why? First and foremost, they're trying to eat from your table. They're they're trying to get the ashes, if you will, from your cigarette. (laughs) To eat from your table, okay? Because they don't know how to go somewhere. They don't know how to go somewhere on their own. So they're trying to eat from your table, but larger than that, bigger than that, they're, they're doing that. They're who they've been hoovering and hoovering and hoovering. Okay. Trying to be on your heels, if you will. She was, you know, she, again, she was innocent, but she was being a, a nuisance to my stepdad at the time because he's, he's just trying to have a fucking cigarette. Okay. So these people don't want you, these entities slash pretend Christians, slash pretend nice people, whatever you want to call it. (laughs) So they can be a nuisance to you. Okay. So that you don't have space to where you can go sit somewhere and breathe and heal. To annoy you, to be a pest. To be in your energy, to be burdening you with their incessant presence. (laughs) This is why they fight tooth and nail to try to hang on to you in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Until when they realize they can't, then that's when Project Sabotage commits. Okay, when you have shaken them off of you. Okay, so I'm going to always advocate and push that. Okay, it's about rebuilding your whole foundation. Get in a place to where you can do that. You can't do that when you're too intimately close to toxic people. You can't do that when you're living in the devil's house. You can't. I'm sorry, because they're sabotaging you in every way. They're doing weird shit. 
They stink nasty energy. You can't do it. This is why I tell people, do the best you can to manifest. By the way, when I was staying, when there was times like the very, very last time that I stayed at my sister's house, I think I had already started going through a lot of levels of the awakening already. But this is why when I was there, as I'm looking back, I can see now, I see now why I would do certain things when I was there because I knew what I knew something was off, whether I could figure it all out or not. I knew that something was weird and all shit, bitch, on some extra status. So did my son. And this is why every time it was always short lived. And I hurried up and manifested my ass out of there, man. Each time. Because it's imperative that we are allowed to get somewhere and not be stressed the fuck out. To not be burdened by and intruded upon and disrespected and just crazy motherfuckers. Because of their shit. You need to be able to be at peace and heal. So that this is another reason why I tell people, well, if you have a lot of hangups, it's going to be a little challenging because at first you're going to probably be challenged to walk away from your comforts. You know, and a lot of people got to swallow their, you know, egoic pride for that because it's like, ooh, I I don't, I don't live in weeklies, okay, all right, I do not, whatever. <laughs> the motherfuckers be living at home with their grandma and shit, bitch, what the fuck? Anyway, I digress. Sometimes we have to be willing and that's all right because you can make any place a home, you all. So don't don't let yourself get tripped up on that. Oh, I shouldn't be. Fuck shouldn't be. It's about your health and your well-being and your safety and your sanity. And you can always rebuild your life from a healthier foundation and recover a, st a stinking house, bitch. A car, some shit. People will trip of what they're willing to sell their souls for. Or their peace. Tormented every day of their waking hours. Every day. <laughs> some of them tormented in the sleep as well. Shit. Behind stilling. See. It ain't worth that. It's advised that we get somewhere, get away, start from scratch if we have to, and rebuild in a healthy, moral way. We may not, you know, be able to live above our means and all these things. You know, we've all been there at some point. But the sooner we can get over that, the, the, the better you'll be willing to get yourself in a safe space without selling yourself out and without working yourself down to a bone because you're trying to keep up with the Joneses, Kardashians, the Holloways, whoever the fuck. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Trying to keep up with this week. It's like, fuck that. Because shit ain't as it seems. Don't, you know, you need to be able to heal. You need to be able to just sit in peace and stillness at some point in the day. Not every day of your life working. You know what I'm saying? Majority of the time, when do you have? Fuck that. I, I set intentions on purpose, bitch. I set intentions. A while ago, a long while ago, I asked my team for it. I said, listen now, if if I'm being called to awaken and heal and work through some shit and, you know, whoop, I got my son and you boo, whoop, de boo, I'm going to need some backup. I'm going to need some backup. Because can't nobody do no proper healing when they're being spent. But this is why they try to push you to have to be spent to begin with so that you can't heal.
so that by the time you come home, if you get to come home, bitch, you work in two jobs that you don't like. Okay? And the motherfuckers, you can't stand and they can't stand you. And it's over, you know, overworking you, over stressful, crazy as fuck, just so you can barely pay a car note, come home. By the time you do all that, you heard me, what you going to do? Exhaustion. Especially if, if you have children. See, this is the strategy. This is why they want you exhausted. I've picked up on their little strategies. I've picked it up. I picked it up. This is why I have a grace. They want you exhausted. So fucking exhausted that you, you don't, you can't, you won't heal because you're exhausted. You get home, you stuff your face and fall out, smoke a cigarette, fall out, get up, do the same crazy shit again, only to barely pay the car note. And then do it again. Then get out there and fuck some silly hoe. You know what I'm saying? And get some other stank energy. Here we go again. Here the fuck we go again. Now we got this crazy on your ass, bitch. And messed around and messed around with another crazy bitch. <laughs> I'm trying, and this goes both ways, y'all. Look, I'm talking about men and women alike, so please don't be mad at Bloomy Blood. Because this is the this is the insidious cycle of this shit. That's the why they want you working, 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 working to only barely pay your bills if you're able to do that. If you're even able to fucking do that, man. But working, 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 working. And then after that, distracted, distracted, distracted because you're tired and exhausted. So either you plop out on a couch or a bed somewhere, veg out to TV, a cigarette, a beer, and get up and do it tomorrow. <laughs> We've all been there. It's like, what the, until you, until when you do wake up and then you'd be like, oh, bitch, then you'd be mad because you go, wait, this ain't. Uh, uh, this ain't no life, bitch. What the hell? It becomes an endless rat race, something that you need, that proverbial hallway that you never get to the end of that door. It's as long as you don't heal. Because that's where your superpower is. As long as you don't awaken, that's where your superpower is. See, as long as you don't do all that, you can stay on a rat race and stay on the shit show the wheel of misfortune over and over and over. <laughs> Somebody said true. I think I'm reading right. They said true. I, said, I know. But see, this is why I'm, I share what I share. I, I'm not here to push anything. I'm, that's not who I am. I'm not here to do that. I'm here to share for those that are resonating so that they'll catch the football, if you will, over the baton. And run with it in the way that they're being guided to run with it. Like, ooh, catch it. Because if you can catch it, then you're going to figure out your way. And won't stay on that shit show of a so-called life. That ain't no way of living. Somebody said, I need to catch it right. We all have to catch it right. We catch the shit. We catch it. It takes us a while to catch it, y'all. So please don't beat up yourself for not catching it. Right? But we do need to catch it for ourselves. Like, oh, bitch. Are you telling me I'm going to be stressing behind this $5, bitch? I'm stressing in just $5. Somebody says, isn't it not my story? I need to catch it. Wait, what? But, um. <laughs> whatever version, you know what I'm saying, that we feel like we've gotten caught up in, whether it's working jobs or it's just a matter of just chasing, chasing, chasing a lot of shits to such a degree of exhaustion and then no real room or space to come to your true self or, or heal because it's too busy chasing highs and thrills, chasing highs and thrills, you know? Somebody says, you got me nervous. Hee <laughs> hee. No. 
No, don't be. We all have to go down that, um, that, you know, that path There's nobody escapes it. Not me, not nobody else. It's, it's a part of the journey. Okay. Where you go, oh shit. <laughs> You'd be like, cause I know it happened to me. You know, our own versions of that. We'd be like, are you all oh, shit, bitch? Because we're logical. And then if you have earth, you know, that the mountain goats, you know, their downside is that they're pragmatic. It's a, it's equally a benefit and a downside. They're pragmatic. So they have a tendency to go, okay, they're rule-based. They're ruled by Saturn, Lord of Karma. Okay, so they're rule based. And then so they're going to be looking at all of those societal, you know, um, norms and, you know, OK, you have to do this, this, this. And OK, you're going to work one hell of a job that you hate and you got to chase the American dream and you posted this bitch and you posted that because you have to have a job and you have to take care of. It. OK, so all this stuff makes sense, but it can go to the left. It can go way to the left. And then they be mad because it's like you, <laughs> man, I started challenging myself. I just started saying, fuck it. When you get to the fuck it level, life gets better. <laughs> it gets better for you because you start releasing attachment. You start releasing it, saying, fuck it. <laughs> You're like, mm, I can recreate this at a later date. Right now, I choose to, you know what I'm saying? And it's true, y'all. I promise you it's true. I literally, this, I saw this. It's for reals. It's true. Every time I follow my higher higher guidance, even when I'm unclear about all of the, the, um, the ins and outs, every time I have done it, then I'd be like, oh, bitch. The shit didn't win down. I'd be like, oh, they, oh, shit. They done covered old bloomy bloom again. I I did not see this coming, bitch. You know what I'm saying? So it's like the, it's proven that when we release the attachment, like, fuck it. I can recreate all this 3D illusionary shit. I can recreate it. I can. But that's not the, the, the point of the matter is my soul. The shit that that's with me, no matter what season of life I'm in. My soul, my mind, my body, my energy, okay? If I can get this back restored into perfect homeostasis, activating parasympathetic functionality, ascending into my, my higher me or the best version of me operating from that divinity, working with my spirit guides, I become a powerful motherfucker stepping into my power. I become able to navigate through whatever it is. See, it's not about never happening to navigate through something. It's about that power to do it. The power to do it without violating a soul. The nature of humanity, you got the cutthroat energy in its low vibrational form of people willing to do whatever for the dollar for survival. Okay, ooh, I want money. I'm going to sell my soul in theirs. Uh, I think you want to read the fine print on that because you're going to kind of pay for trying to sell off a divine soul. Ah, uh, it's treason. You're going to pay for that. Kind of want to read things a little deeper. I digress. The power to go through, right? Your own ascension. The power to think about it like that. The power to go through your own healing because you got to heal. We have to heal, don't we? We have to heal from the shits, right? That's been done to us. And we got to, we have to heal from our own mistakes, right? Our choices, the things we did in our shadow energy, the things we did in our broken state. We have to heal, right? From the fuck nuts and the fuck shit we inherited from blood and from other fuckers around us. The power to heal, that's a gift in itself. Because, you, you know, you're going to have to be able to kind of deal with that. So all the little bit of tips that I share with y'all over time is the little smallest things that you can do consistently that you're going to eventually find out that pave the way for you to be able to work on you. 
so that you didn't go fuck yet another degenerate this week. And here we go again. Now we got to clean the energy because you see what I'm saying? Because you get, you start to get tired of the fact that when you entertain and intertwine yourself with toxic energies of how you have to clear yourself. And, and <laughs> oh shit, it's some of the shit that follow you, bitch. Because see, it, it <laughs> it's only fun when you could, you know, shit, bitch. You know, <laughs> y'all, y'all, don't be getting mad. Don't be getting mad. It's, it's only fun, okay, when you get to just, you know, call it a mistake and then everybody go on their way. Right? It's like, it, but people aren't operating like that nowadays. People, you know, are in some very, very strange energies. And if they're not ascending and waking up, then they're subject to be, you know, one of the dark ones. That's how I feel about that. So at any given moment, their whole little brain could be hacked. Here they come, because they're after the light ones. Here they come. Let's let's send in Sally Sue, super, super slut, to take his whole ass down. Let's send her in. Send her in. <laughs> or vice versa. Or vice versa, y'all. Take care of yourself. I'm going to push it and I'm going to be a broken record. Take care of yourself. Take care, please. Take care of yourself. Inside out, take care of yourself. Take care of yourself, which would include be mindful. Don't be fast and loose. Don't be fast and loose with your life, with your physicality, with who you're letting touching on you and who you're sharing shit with and drinking behind. People are crazy. They're crazy. They're trying to get shit set up. People trying to, man. This is why, you know, when men come to me to talk to me about shit, you know, I, I, be, I tell them this. I'll be like, man, my, my, my nigga. I'll be trying to talk to them like a homie so they can catch it. Sometimes they can't get past my face. But I'll be like, man, look. It's on you. Don't get caught up. Don't get caught up. Because see, people are using their feminine wiles. They're using spells. They're using anything they can to try to trap people into shit. Don't get caught up. Because ain't no fuck that serious. Ain't no orm candy that damn serious because that orm candy can become a source of a fucking nightmare. And see, and, and all they say when I say that, when, when the men do come to me, you know, they be like, true, true. You know, because I'll be trying to talk to them like the homie. I'll be trying. They're like, true. I'm like, well, shit, don't tell, don't tell old bloom, bloom, bloomy bloom. Ain't gonna want to hear it because I'm like, look, dude, y'all gotta, you gotta get your shit. To, you gotta come on now. They plan on your weakness. They know, they know what your bent is. You know, they stroking your ego. If that's all it takes to get you caught up, then here they come. They gonna have all compliments, world records of compliments at their disposal. <laughs> Ding dong. <laughs> Oh, oh, you so fine. I, if you were mine, oh, I would never do that to you with, with the evil divine feminine did to you. I would never. You're, if I had someone like you, I would just so, I would be like, I would cook all of your favorite meals while I put spells on them and poison. Oh. I would so give you a massage while I'm putting special wishes. Shimmy, shimmy. Oh, they ain't gonna take it. They ain't gonna take it. <laughs> oh, you're so fine. You're so smart. Oh, you're my hero. I'm just so the damsel in distress. And it's just so trying to trap you, and you are too dumb to know it. 
Yeah, see, that's the part they don't tell you. This is why we have to get a hold of it. Whether we're a man or a woman. Because here they come, y'all. They want to get close to you. Right? As you heal and get stronger, but see, this is important so that when you're coming out of this, right, as you start to engage with life and the world and others, from your healed place in strength, once you go through certain things, then it's not going to feel this way, right? You'll be able to, like I said the other day, I think I mentioned something about somebody's able to read. They're able to feel and read energy a lot easier and it was starting to alleviate stress. So it's not that you have to end up hiding from the world. You just become a powerhouse. You be you go through your healing, which requires what? Like in the animal kingdom, if they get wounded, they have to go somewhere to what? Give themselves some space to what? So they can tend to what? Their wounds. Right? Now, you can bet your bottom dollar the degenerates are going to try to bring people in while you're healing because they don't want you to be able to do it. This is why you have to have your mind made up. Like, look, I don't need a fuck that bad. You got me. That's the old me. I don't need chips that bad. I don't need no, no, no shit. Whatever you selling, whatever you have, I don't need it that bad. Bye. I don't need no attention that bad. I, I don't need it. I fuck that. Right now, my primary focus is this. And then when I come out, I'm going to be stronger, a stronger version of me. And then I'll be able to smell more easily. Energies like that and, and it literally either ignore them. And keep pushing. Like, I ain't even going to entertain. There, there ain't going to even be no exchanges. I'm going to be like on the look in the other way. I don't know. Hello. I don't want to talk, bitch. You know, you say, <laughs> this is a bye-bye, baby. Bye-bye. Or if, you know, you don't detect it right away, then you're just simply going to be strong enough to be able to cut it away a lot quicker. Before unnecessary damage has been done. And you won't feel, I promise this, because I'm starting to see it. This is why I could talk like that. I'm starting to see it. I'm also starting to realize or see how bold I've become in situations in, in the public or dealing with people um, in the public, literally in the public, you know, that I meet or I come across. It's shocking. It's shocking. Some of them find it funny. You know, some people, they find it funny, that, you know, because I'll be saying shit. They're like, dang. And I'm like, Ex yeah, exactly. Because I'm not going to, I'm no longer going to be anything other than my authentic self. I'm not changing nothing. Except for the natural transformation that I'm ever unfolding and going through via my spirit team and my higher self. But I'm not doing that contorting shit. I'm going to be a kind person as I always have, respectful to folks until people show me something differently the way I've always been. And here are the key, here are the key, until they show me something different. Until they show me something different. Until they show me something different. When they, you know, as long as they have shown me, they're treating me with honor and respect and regard, that's the energy they're going to get back from me. But if they show me something else, let's just say, I'll have fun. Because it's like, get the fuck on with that shit. That's how I feel about it in life at this point in the game. <laughs> Got no time for that. But this is once you have at least first given yourself space. My guides ensured this. It was a part of my contract. It's one of the gifts from the gods, if you will. That I'd be granted that from all of the injustices done to me and to my son. 
so that we would have space to recover. Okay? So always keep that at the forefront of your life and that know that that matters. No matter if you can convince people that or not, stop giving a fuck. And I know that's easier said than done, but when you get tired of being on the receiving end of the fuckery, you will eventually get to the place where you don't give a fuck no more and it's hell to pay for motherfuckers that keep fucking with you. <laughs> I love this shit. All right. Well, before I crack, I crack myself up, man, because I don't know, man, they should have left me alone. They should have fucking left me alone. That's how I feel about it. Too bad. I don't have nothing to say. Should have bitch. Should have left me alone. Should have left my kid alone. Should have left my life alone. Should have left my shit alone. That's how I feel about that. So I ain't trying to hear nothing. I'm trying to hear a foolery bitch. Let's see if it, oh man. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is where we have to get, you guys. Stop caring about shit and people who have proven to you. You hear me? Let that shit go. <laughs> let that shit go and go on somewhere. Like, nah, fuck that. I'm let that shit go and be about, uh, ain't got time for that. Ain't got Late in the game. It says something about you will notice that many will love the idea of you, but they lack the maturity to handle the reality of you. To handle the reality of you. Okay. And that's the truth. So people sometimes, you know, you just have to get used to that. Okay. They could be having a fantasy and all that stuff, but they don't have the maturity level and development. Wait, somebody put a happy face? Wait, what is that? I'm sorry, y'all. Oh, no, somebody put the yes and the... the <laughs> right? It's the truth. And I had to... I'm just now... Listen to this, though. I'm just now starting to see this as a reality, to see how this plays out and why. It's a trip to me, actually. Because people are like your energy, something that I've I've come to accept that, yeah, I'll notice, especially when people meet me or like if, um, in persons and all of that, where, you know, people will be drawn to you and want to be around you. And it's funny, and I, I watch this all the time to this day and I'm and I'm still pleasant. I'm my normal me and I look at them and I talk to da da da. Right. They're drawn to you. And they're telling you their life story, which I find fascinating because people have always did this. They're drawn to you. They're telling you their life story, bitch, and everything. And they like hanging around. Now they smile and you notice that they're happy. Why? Because they've been in the presence, bitch. They've been in the presence <laughs> of divine feminine, bitch. Okay? But when it comes down to being able to have the maturity level to cultivate a healthy, ongoing connection, they lack it. They lack it, man. Because they're just wanting to, what, feed. Most people are just trying to feed. So, you know, even without judgment, it's just an observation like, okay, well, you know, this is certainly not something I, that I will be looking for equal give and take, okay? And then I'll put up a boundary and cut it off and like keep going and so forth, right? 
but I still enjoy you guys. Don't get it twisted. I'm gonna change this one here because this face is up close and personal, bitch. It's in your face. So I'm gonna change the filter. <laughs> I'm gonna change the filter here. <laughs> that was equally big, but anyway, there's some big eyebrows that I still laugh at to this day. I'm like, damn, bitch, we ain't, we ain't wearing eyebrows like that no more. But anyway, <laughs> some tall eyebrows, bitch. But um, <laughs> I'm gonna stop. Um, so <laughs> you know, I still get to enjoy. You guys don't get it twisted. You do get to a phase. Where I do get to still enjoy like exchanges with people, even if it stops there. Like that's it. It doesn't be anything else. They go on about their life and I'm going about my hi. Oh, you know, woody boo. Okay, bye bye. And then I'm going about my life and they're going about theirs. And I'm okay with it. I promise I'm okay with that. See, this is when we start dealing with the wounds, those abandonment issues. Those rejection issues that make us pine and attach, that makes us pine and pine and pine and attach to shit like, ooh, we're going to be friends forever. Maybe not. I'm just, as long as this is a cool exchange, bitch. As long as this is a cool exchange, that's how I'm going to look at it until it ain't anymore. Okay. Um, and I'm okay. And you all will be too. So you'll still get to have your fun and you'll get to experience things. And the whole point of awakening and healing and ascending is so that you get stronger, that you put up boundaries, that you honor yourself. So that way, when you go in connections, as you move on in life, whether they're friends, partnerships or lovers, that you're not going to sell yourself out anymore. Did you hear what I said? That you're not going to sell yourself out anymore. For a so-called friend, okay, a so-called lover, a so-called partner, that you're going to have some healthy boundaries if they're violating you and know how to, knowing when to hold them, when to fold them, knowing what's worth fighting for and what you need to let go of, right? And knowing that it's okay. Receive what you got out of that with gratitude. Be grateful for the experience. Be grateful for the wisdom. Be grateful for the, the good time that was there. And it's okay. It's time to move on, bitch. <laughs> it gets fun. I hope you guys step into your badass energy because you all are some badasses. Okay? They tried to beat that out of you. I promise you, that's what they did. They were trying to beat that out of you. They didn't want you to know that you were a badass. They were scared of you to begin with. This is another thing they didn't want you to know. They were scared of you. <laughs> this is, <laughs> I'm saying, this is why they do it, okay? They scared of you. People don't got to team up against motherfucker they ain't scared of. They scare. I'm telling you straight up. They ain't got to do that. You do not have to team up and get a group, bitch, and all this shit against a motherfucker you ain't scared of. They're scared. Because they be coming up against one motherfucker. It be one motherfucker. They coming up against that standing and they own and shit, bitch. One. And why? Why, though? Why? Because that one motherfucker is that motherfucker. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just, okay, I'm going to stop being silly, y'all. <laughs> A little old bloomy bloom. You see old little bloom blooms? Biography. She's writing a story. She's telling it all. All her violators is going to be revealed. And even when she's gone, the world will know it. <laughs> Somebody says you're funny. I'm funny, right? 
I know I'm funny. People tell me this, actually. I see it on people's faces when they meet me. They be like, she, she funny. Like, they'll laugh. They'll have a straight face or until I start talking. And then something will come out of my mouth. And then they'll start laughing. <laughs> right? I'm like, I'm like right? <laughs> um, somebody says, wait. They say you're fun. Then it says... But she's speaking to you. Well, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like why I came on earth. But I had to accept that I was going to be targeted for this reason, too. So I was graced. Me and my son have been graced because, you know, being targeted. And I'm going to have fun, bitch. See, now this latter part shit, I'm telling y'all how this shit fits on the go down, bitch. Fits on the tell you. Fits on the tell you. This latter part of my life is about to get very interesting. It's supposed to get real fun. Just imagine, see this face? She look all sweet, don't she? See this big, this big head, big head, face, eyes, tall eyebrows, right? <laughs> see, see, see this face? <laughs> Just imagine that, that face. Yeah. Just imagine she got her Catwoman suit on, bitch. She gonna put on her Catwoman suit from Batman. Okay, she gonna put on her Catwoman suit. <laughs> they done fucked up. She's gonna have her rope jumping, do -do -do -do, skipping. But wrecking house, going down with flames. Wrecking house, visiting every motherfucker. That was a part of fuck shit to me. It's like, da -da 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 Harley Quinn. <laughs> Somebody said, wait, wait, can I see the words? Glasses, Brad. Come on. They said beautiful. Aww. Thank you. That's old school picture. That's old school, but this is, this is the new school. I have to bring it to the 2022. You already saw that one. Ah, uh, where's 20? There I am. That's a bloomy 2022 version. Okay. <laughs> and now she ain't smiling. She got a serious look. She's waiting to wreck house. <laughs> she said, <laughs> she's like, I'm coming. She got her fingers pointed like, I'm coming, bitches. Here I come. <laughs> oh, somebody says, once you're beautiful, you will always be it. Oh. In my soul, yeah. I mean, I, I joke around and play with y'all, but I've always known, if I'm going to keep it on the 100, that the true beauty was my soul, my energy, my frequency, that that's what people felt, is what people see, okay? It's what they see. And I think that's, you know, that's what's true beauty. I tell people this all the time. This, you know, pretty is a dime a dozen. You know, that's the nature of the game on earth. If you got enough money, you can almost virtually make yourself, <laughs> you can make yourself pretty. Ugly is to the bone. And see, and that's the shit to me that emanates outside of a person. This is why when I see people, I see past all of it. And if there's a beautiful soul, I can see that shine through people. I can see it because it amplifies their physicality too. You know what I'm saying? And I've seen people that were super pretty in this physical, but it, they didn't look pretty to me because I saw the ugly that was to the bone em emitting out of their energy. I saw it. I feel it. And it's like, yeah, they got on imported wig, bitch. They didn't have bitch. Uh. They got a bad body, they got this, they got that, but they ugly, straight up. Because I can see it, I can see the depravity, I can feel the depravity. They have a fucked up ass personality, a fucked up ass soul, and they do fucked up shit. So, as where other people may still be stargazed by that illusionary external, I don't be. I'd be like, yeah. I smell the crazy. 
I smell murder. Murder behind the imported wig. You know what I'm saying? See, I mean, that's why they don't like me because they know I can. They know I can see it. And this is why they fight hard to try and discredit me because they know I can see it. But um, all right, y'all. Bloomy Bloom gonna stop clowning with y'all. Woo. Love y'all. Take care of yourself though, for real, okay? Take care of yourself. Guard your energy, okay? And uh, know that you deserve a second chance in life, no matter what path that you have been on. If you are sincerely trying to awaken and heal and becoming the best version of yourself, then you deserve the space for that. OK. And usually the people that have been in our lives when we were part of fuckery, they don't want to give you the space for that, because guess what? They don't want you to get away from that. Because they won't be able to benefit off of your ascension. Remember, I told you that. Okay. Anyway, have a great evening. You're very welcome, you guys. Thank you. Those of you who came in and sent positive vibes and love and light and the good shit. Woo. All right. I'll be back. It's going to be later tonight. I'm coming in with the reading for those of you who feel like it's going to resonate. The DDBK deck. Okay. Their daily dose of bad karma. So fucking with you. You heard me? Or somebody <laughs> or somebody that you think about the motherfuckers and they daily dose, bitch. Okay? All right, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.